lips of a bite's no reorder In the order, yeah, who is said no order Yes, I'd come up so such has got Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today on this few days, this weekend after Thanksgiving, and a reminder that we do all of this and we give praise to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the first day of Advent. We are beginning the Advent season. In Armenian, Hisnag. Hisnag is 50 days before a big celebration, which of course is Christmas. The Advent season begins today. January 6th is Christmas, Nativity. Count backwards 50 days and you're right here. Today is that day where we begin a, a period of preparation, preparing ourselves for the Lord's arrival into our lives, into this world. Because on the Nativity, God reconciled humanity. God said that I love you so much. I'm sending you my very best. And Jesus Christ, the manifestation of God, God incarnate, love incarnate, was in our midst. And of course, to prepare for such an awesome revelation, we have to prepare ourselves physically as well as mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And the church designates this next 50 days for us to prepare ourselves, to get ready for this awesome coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we begin today with the scriptural passage that our church fathers have given us. The lectionary for reading for today sets the tone of what this Advent season is all about. The reading today, the gospel reading, if you were in church this morning, you would have heard it in all of the Armenian churches, comes to us from the gospel of St. Luke chapter 12. And in these verses, I, I think you're going to understand that Jesus gives us really the key by which we open up our lives and ourselves and our soul to this beautiful period of Advent. Because as we get ready, this is, what, this is my promise to you. As you follow these readings, as you follow this period of Advent, when it gets to Christmas morning, when you wake up on January 6th and you say that Christ has been revealed in our midst, it's not just a few words you're putting together. It's actually a reality that Christ is living within you. But it takes preparation. It takes time. And so today, let's begin with this very important reading that sets the tone for it. And Jesus says, this is from Luke chapter 12, Take heed and beware of all covetousness. For a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. What? Man's life doesn't <laughs> Wait, I got to read that again. I can't believe it. It does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Now, this is quite different from what we're taught here, right? Because especially, did you see Black Friday sales? Did you see what's going on in the world? Everything is about possession, about having things, about spending money. And the more you spend, the more things you get. The more things you get, the better off you are. It's not enough that I have one car. I have to have a very good car. And on top of one car, I need an extra car. It's not okay that I have one house. I have to have a second house. And so we are playing inside of this game. And many years ago, there was a nice saying. It says, he who dies with the most toys wins. And that's the mentality of the game that we play. So many of us play. We think the more that we have in our pockets, the better off we are. The more money, the more possessions we have, the better off we are. The higher status we have. And you look around you, all around you, who are the people that are celebrated? Well, you look on TV, you look on movies, right? It's people who are rich. But you know what? You go into our churches. Who are the people that are applauded? Who are the people that are given certain uh, places of honor? people who are rich. And what does Jesus tell us? Something quite the opposite. Something completely different. Listen, I'm going to read it again. He says, take heed and beware. This is not me. This is our Lord Jesus Christ saying, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And Jesus went on to tell us this parable. I want you to listen to it very carefully comes from the Gospel of Luke, and I invite you to read it after, after this show today. He says, A rich man brought forth plentiful, 
This man had so much. Everything that he did was going so good. In fact, he had so much so much food and his, his land was giving out all kinds of rewards. And this man says, I have so much right now. I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. Hey, that's pretty smart, right? If everything is going well for you, if you've got a lot of money, if you've got a lot of things, what should you do? Pull down the walls, build bigger barns so you could store stuff. And look at around you, public storage, our garages are full, our houses are full. Tear down the walls. Let's build bigger places where we could accumulate everything that we have. And so this man, he was a smart man, he did that. And then he says, I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Well, why not? You got everything you want. Just relax, take it easy. You've got food, you've got your wheels, you've got your house, you've got barns full of all the items that you need, and you've got money in the bank. Take it easy. And what does he say over here? Eat, drink, and be merry. In Armenian, there's a saying, Udenk chmenk kefaneng. That's it. Kick back. It is all easy street from this point on. And you know what Jesus says? You're going to be surprised. Do you think Jesus applauds? Do you think Jesus says, hey, good for you. You're a smart man. Well, he says, God said to this man, fool. What? Fool. God said to this man, fool, this night your soul is required of you. And so what good is all of this stuff that you've accumulated? This night it's finished for you. And that's how important this message is for this, series, this period of Advent. Fool. Do you want God to say fool to you? I certainly don't. But that's what it comes down to. So what you have all of this? What does it mean? Because this night, this night, your soul is being required of you. And you know what, my friends? There's going to come a time in everyone's life, everyone, where that night will come. It may be, it may be a long time from now. I hope you live a long, long life. But at some point, it's going to come. And at that point, God's going to say, what did you do with all the stuff that I gave you? And you can say, well, I accumulated. I got more. I got one car. I got two cars. Now I've got three cars. I've got one house. I've got two houses. You know what? I gave money all over the place, and they gave me all kinds of medals. They gave me a special seat in the church. And you know what? God's going to say, fool. What good is all of that? What good is all of that? Did you set up a treasure inside of your heart? Is God alive in your heart? Is God living in your heart? The great civil rights leader, Martin Luther King, many years ago, he said the reason why Jesus called this man a fool was because this guy had a lot of stuff, but he didn't know where to put it. He built a bigger barn. He says, you want to know where the bigger barn was? How about the um empty tummies of all of those kids who go to bed hungry? How about building... New, new schools? How about giving uh, time for education? How about giving a place where people can be served and receive their part, their share of all the goodness that God has to offer, but somehow it's been pushed away because of their means, because of their inability to function in this society? How about helping other people? And you see, this is the tone that we send we set, we set, this is the tone that our church fathers have insisted that we set for this period of Advent. He's snug. Because when Christmas comes, we're going to say that Jesus Christ is in our midst. Christos imechmer haidnetzav. Christos zanaviev haidnetzav. This is just a little slogan we throw out unless it has meaning. And the way it has meaning is for us to be prepared. The first lesson of this Advent season is very clear. It's not in the abundance of the things that you have. The real life is what you have in your heart. Your ability to take that abundance and give to others, 
to help others, to place that wealth in the hands of other people who can use, who can prosper. Because you know what? This Thanksgiving was an incredible time. You know, this year we had all kinds of difficulties. We have a recession, a depression going on. People are, are, are looking for means. But you know what? We are better off than most of the, the world. If you're watching me right now, you're watching me on a TV or on a computer, it means you have a means to technology, it means you have electricity, you're better than most. You're not good as some, but you're better than most. And so we need to say thank you. And when our ability to say thank you to God, what happens? We start seeing that we are now becoming optimistic because all that we have is enough. We certainly do have many blessings. And thank you, God, for those blessings. Now, with those blessings in mind, can I take that and give to others? This is our opportunity. As Christians, as this Christmas season is coming, I'm going to invite you to follow along this Advent journey in your churches with me here, here on, on the show. You're going to see that each of these readings that we put together in the next few weeks brings us closer and closer to that reality that Christ is in our midst, that Christ is not only born on December 25th or January 6th, but Christ is born every single day in the human heart, in the heart that is receptive to this message of love. I invite you to take a hold of this love. Take a look at the scripture and remember Jesus' warning that he says life is not in the abundance of what you have. He goes on to point to the sparrows of the, earth, of the air. He says, look at them. You know how beautiful they are, those sparrows? Take a look. Go outside. Take a look at the birds. You know, they don't, ta they don't worry about tomorrow. They don't worry about how many homes they have, what they're going to do. They worry about the day's problems, and that's enough for them. And he says, God takes care of them. Aren't you worth more than those birds in the air? Aren't you worth something very special to God that he gave his only son to you? Okay, if he loves you that much, why do you worry about those things? Why do you care about those things? He says, look at those birds. They're okay. God will take care of you as well. Let's have that kind of faith. Let's make this season a season of Advent where we wake up in faith we start understanding what our responsibility is, not only to ourselves, but to, our, but to the world. That the things that we do have, have only value when we start assembling them and giving them out. Join me during this journey, this Advent season, in step with Christ. Let's walk with him. We're going to see that he opens up the door to many beautiful things. I want to invite you to get on board with us. Get involved in your church. Go to our diocese website. And over there you'll find a tab that says parishes. Find a church that's close to you. Go talk to the priest. Talk to the people in there. Get involved in the community that's there. If you want to get involved with me, I'm at epostle.net. That's apostolic evangelism for an electronic universe. So until next week, I remind you that all of this we have done to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.